Hey y'all, welcome back to Outdoors with No-No. Today we're gonna be cooking some crawfish etouffee. And if you don't know what that is, tune in. So crawfish etouffee is a dish where we have crawfish tails with trinity. And trinity is a mixture of onion, bell pepper, green onion, and celery. The green onion's actually an addition too. Really trinity is just the onion, bell pepper, and celery. But the green onion is awesome. And actually reminded me, I have more green onion in the fridge. So it involves making a roux. So I got some flour, I got my stick of butter right here. And then I'm just using these couple seasonings. They pretty much got everything we need right there. Some cayenne pepper, some Tony's, and some parsley flakes. And then I got my crawfish tails, which I'm soaking right here. And a lot of them, the directions will tell you to just, uh, empty the entire contents and just use it as is and keep the juice. I actually don't like the juice. I feel like the juice is mostly always got a little fishiness to it. So what I'm going to do is actually rinse them and then I'm going to include some crab boil or crawfish boil seasoning and incorporate it into these crawfish tails in a bowl. And that'll give them like, you know, a good little flavor like they were boiled fresh. So that's about it. We're just gonna be incorporating all that right here in this pot here shortly. So. so the first thing that I need to do is make a roux. And what that is, you get some oil, you use butter, whatever kind of oil you want, and then some flour. And basically you're gonna put that flour in there and you gotta continually stir while the flour is gonna brown in the oil mixture. And the longer you make the roux, the darker it is, it gets a little more, you know, I wouldn't say bitter, some people say, oh, you overcook it if it's bitter. But for crawfish etouffee, you want just like a peanut butter kind of color roux. So once we get this nice and hot, I'm gonna put about, I don't know, half a cup, maybe a cup. And we'll see how that works out. All right, so I got the flour in there and you don't want it to get burned. So we need to mix it all up. It needs to be all incorporated. No, nothing white in there. All right, so it's like, you know, a blondish color now. The longer I cook this, I have to continually stir it. The longer I cook it, the darker it's gonna get, so. For some gumbos, people love it real dark, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, they're all kind of gatekeepers when it comes to roux and all that, and the color of your gumbo. You could put anything you want in a gumbo. You could put hamburger meat in a gumbo. I don't care. Who's gonna tell you? Don't listen to the haters. So we're just gonna keep on cooking this. Be right back. All right, getting close to that color we want. I think what we'll do is go ahead and get those vegetables added. Once they get added, it pretty much kills the root process. So we're not gonna stop with just the vegetables. And I forgot we got another ingredient. Tomatoes, you can use stewed tomatoes, crushed, whatever your fancy is. Just make sure it doesn't have any Italian dressing in there, any Italian seasoning. So let me go get these vegetables added in. And we're just gonna get all this mixed up. These vegetables need to cook down, you know? We wanna get the onion translucent, the bell pepper, we want it all to cook down. As these vegetables cook down, they are gonna have some liquid, which is great, but I should add some, I should have had some stock. I'm gonna have to just make some chicken stock. That's what I'm gonna use for this. All right, so I mean, you can see the roux. I ended up adding the water in there and it thickened up a lot. 
maybe more than I needed, but that's all right. We're gonna keep this rolling. I'm about to add the uh, stewed tomatoes or whatever I got in there and the crawfish tails, and then we will see how we're sitting. And I'm about to also add all the ingredients too, like the Tony's, the cayenne pepper, and parsley. Cayenne is probably like the best ingredient ever. It's my favorite, so. And of course, it wouldn't be an outdoor cooking video if Voodoo didn't show up. This dude right here. Voodoo, make your magic sounds. Come on, psst, psst, psst. Voodoo. Magic sound. Woo. Yeah. No magic sounds. All right, so we're getting there. It's still, you know, pretty thick, way thicker than I would like. I'm going to add some more moisture, just some water, really, to get this little thinned up. But it's it's getting there, and then uh, I gotta get the tails in, so coming together the rice is already done on the stove so if you need to learn how to cook rice I don't know how to tell you that so I decided to keep the juice and I ended up adding some crawfish boil mixture right to the juice added some water to get it all kind of married together in here and I like to just, you know, go through and make sure all the tails look good. Um, sometimes I'll have little poos, you know, strips in there. I'll clean that up or any uh, shell. And there's a little piece of grass right here. Literally a piece of grass, which is fine. I mean, this is where crawfish come from. They come from fields. You know, this is probably farm raised crawfish, but it was local. You always gotta buy Louisiana crawfish. I mean, you could buy the Chinese stuff. Buy whatever you want. Can't tell you what to do. But I'm about to put this in. Let's get it. All right. So all that water, you know, I did have that uh, crab boil mixture to it. That is seasoned water. It is well seasoned. And the uh, what I had in the pot, you know, we'll call it etouffee without the crawfish. It was fairly seasoned. It wasn't fully seasoned. Now, you know, this dish, let me tell you, it's gonna stick to your bones. So it's probably 90 degrees today. It's a little hot. If I made this in winter time, oh my God, you'd be so warm by the time you finish eating. But you know, we eat gumbo etouffee any time of year. It really doesn't matter, so. Just gonna let this all kind of marry up do a couple more taste tests I think I'm close to to done but it's a hide hide the children this is a shit ton of food <laughs> I don't need this much a too fat hey if you got num my number go on give me a call text me hey I'll give you some y'all know I give away my food man I don't care So I did end up adding some more Tony's and that's what I put. I just dusted it right on top. Tony's is great stuff, but it doesn't have a lot of heat, but it does have a ton of salt. So there's a couple different versions. They have like the salt free version. That way you're getting all the seasoning and none of the salt. And then they do have like an extra spicy version because I feel, you know, this one's lacking. This one's really just kind of like salt, but that's why I have my own little cayenne right there. So I could add that separately. The heat was fine. I mean, I could put more in, but I'm not trying to kill anybody. So just enough tingle on the back of your tongue. 
by the time you finish eating the plate, you're gonna feel it more. And then if you go for a second, well, you'll be all right. I mean, it ain't that bad. If you can't handle the heat, I'll add some milk to it for you. We'll just cut it down with some milk. Serve it to you in a, in a bottle or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, I'm just speaking my mind. And I'm thinking of one person right now. He's tall. He's like six foot nine. But that's that's. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out, bro. What's up? All right, all right. I'm just messing. But this came out like perfect. I mean, I would like another um, another pack of crawfish tails because you know you want higher ratio. Like that's a good bite, right? That's gonna be served over rice. I have the rice already cooked, like I said. But you want that higher ratio of crawfish to sauce. But I mean, we're good. It's just for me and the wife. Now, if you had some French bread for this, yeah, you'd be good to go. Just uh, let the butter sit out to get room temp so it's nice and uh, soft. Get that butter on some French bread, dip it in there. Oh man, oh man. I mean, you could put crackers too. Get some butter and crackers and just pick up some of this. <sighs> Look, maybe it's just the butter. I don't know if it's the addition of the cracker or the French bread. Maybe it's just the butter. Maybe we should just put butter in this. Oh, Jesus. All right, I'm just messing. Let me calm down. All right. Got the heat off right now. Mostly because you just have to keep stirring it. You don't want anything sticking. Now, I got a little bowl right here. Now, I I can't eat too much, but I'll give you all a little a viewing. So got the white rice that's what we serve it on and uh let's go ahead and get a taste in there see look at that that is the stuff so The, the white rice, you know, is unseasoned. It's just plain white rice. So that's why the etouffee, you can have a little more powerful because it's uh, mixing up in there. How's it going? pretty good. Definitely pushing that on some crackers would be killer yeah the heat is great i'm feeling it right now right at the back of my throat top bottom it's perfect it's very delicious i'm excited to eat this <laughs> so hey thanks for watching as always everybody I appreciate all y'all support and uh you know i'll be making more videos i'm gonna try to keep up once a week i will be moving at the end of this month so I'm going to try to get a bunch of videos scheduled to make sure we don't have any break of content because uh, it's going to be busy there for a little bit and, you know, won't have my computer set up and all that. Anyway, so keep, uh, keep on tuning in, y'all. Appreciate you. Later. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Outdoors with No-No. Today, we're going to be cooking some crawfish etouffee. It's a dish that we like. Ooh, 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 ooh.